Now, where in the world did we ever get Easter to celebrate Jesus' resurrection? Have you ever wondered about that? I bet most of you have never thought about it twice. You know why? Because everybody's always done it. Your mommy and daddy did it. Their parents did it. Grandma and grandpa did it. Great grandparents did it. You do it because everybody else has done it all your life. You just kind of go along because everybody else has done it, right? All right. But where did it come from? Did the thought ever cross your mind? First of all, let me make a statement here that's going to blow your mind. Do you know that Easter Sunday cannot possibly be the day of the resurrection? You know why? Easter never falls on the same date year to year, right? It can't be the day of Jesus' resurrection. I'll tell you why. Look at the screen here, for example. Let's go back five or six years. In 1996, Easter came on April the 7th. That's when you all celebrated it. The next year, 1997, it came on March the 30th. Hmm. The next year, 1998, it came on April the 12th. Last year, it came on April the 3rd. This year, it's going to come on April the 23rd. So how can you have a difference from April the 23rd clear back to March 30th? That's a difference of 23 days. How does that happen? I'll tell you how it happens. Easter is not regulated by a date. Easter is regulated by the solar system. You know why? Easter always comes the first Sunday after the first full moon, after the equinox when days and nights are equal length. You never knew that, did you? Isn't that amazing? And so all the people that are celebrating the resurrection of Jesus on Easter Sunday morning, it's just not true. It didn't happen then. <laughs> okay? But anyway, the question is, how did we ever get Easter on the first Sunday after the first full moon at the equinox? Did you ever wonder about that? I'll tell you where it comes from. Would you like to guess? It comes from Babylon. You're right. Everything goes back to Babylon. I don't care what it is. In Babylon, they had a goddess of fertility. Her name was, interestingly, Ishtar. I-S-H-T-A-R. That's where we get our word Easter from, was this pagan goddess of fertility. If you doubt this, by the way, go home tonight in your encyclopedia and look up Easter in your encyclopedia. It'll tell you the whole story that I'm going to tell you right now. It's in every history book. And what they did, this goddess of fertility called Ishtar, they worshipped her in the springtime. You know why? Because everything was coming to life. And she was the one that caused all life and everything to grow anyway. So they thought she got very active in the springtime. So they honored her always on the first Sunday after the first full moon after the equinox. That was Ishtar's day because she was the goddess of fertility, the goddess of reproduction. And you know what happens, folks? They took that then and they celebrated this day of her in her honor. And so did Medo-Persia. And so did Greece. In fact, uh, Greece had her under another name called Venus. You ever heard of Venus before? That's Ishtar in Babylon, the same thing. And then you go to Rome, and Rome had this, and folks, the same thing. You come to Constantine. Constantine, about 300 years after Jesus, says, hey, we got all these pagans out here, and they're worshiping Ishtar on the first Sunday after the first full moon after equinox. You know what? Jesus rose from the tomb in the springtime. It was Passover time and so on. Why don't we take this Ishtar's day, and instead of giving honor to Ishtar, the giver of life and so on, Jesus is the resurrection. Jesus is the life. Why don't we start to keep this day in honor of Jesus Christ? And we can win all these pagans to Christianity. And the Christian said, that's a great idea. And so, folks, he changed Easter's day to Easter day in honor of Jesus' resurrection. And then as Papal Rome again rules the entire world for the next 1260 years, it passes that teaching on to everybody in the world, and the whole world does it, and nobody even thinks twice about it. But you all tell me, what in the world do chocolate chickies and bunny rabbits got to do with the resurrection of Jesus? Amen? Did you ever wonder about that? I bet you didn't. You know why? You've done it all your life. Everybody does it. But you know where it comes from? Make a guess. Babylon is right. Because folks, in Babylon, they worshipped the egg on Easter's Day. Because an egg is a symbol of fertility. Not only that, they worship bunny rabbits on Easter's Day. You know why? Because bunny rabbits are the most prolific reproducers in the world. I know. I grew up on a ranch. We had lots of rabbits. All rabbits do is make love and have babies. Isn't that right? Yeah. And so, honestly, they worship the rabbit. And we still have that today. All the way back from Babylon. Amazing, isn't it? But now, folks, I want to ask you another question here tonight. I want you to think with me, because you're intelligent people. If things like Christmas and Easter, coming straight from pagan Babylon, have made their way into our world tonight and been Christianized, and everybody just does it because everybody else does it, 
My question to you is this. Don't you suppose that there might be some other things also? Don't you suppose there might have been some other false teachings or errors or pagan practices or deceptions that have snuck their way in that we are following and teaching and practicing that's totally contrary to the truth of the Bible? Don't you think there might be some of those? You better believe it, my friends. You better believe it.